There's a high stakes meeting that's underway right now as top FDA officials decide whether or not COVID booster shots are needed for those Americans who are vaccinated. And this all comes after Pfizer requested approval to begin offering third doses to people 16 and older following growing pressure from the White House. The FDA is reviewing the information and they are expected to vote on the issue this afternoon. Now, this all comes as an alarming new study reveals nursing home aides were among the least likely to be fully vaccinated against COVID despite caring for some of the most vulnerable Americans. The study finds around 61% of nurses working in these facilities are vaccinated. That is considerably lower than doctors and therapists. However, cases and deaths in nursing homes are dropping nationwide. So joining us now is Dr. Bob Lahida. He's the director at the Institute for Autoimmune and Rheumatic Diseases at St. Joseph Health. So Dr. Bob, let's start with this FDA vote on Pfizer's booster shot. Uh, if the agency does not support boosters at this time, how does this impact the Biden administration's plan as the Delta variant continues to spread? And I mean boosters for people who are not immunocompromised, who are not elderly, who are young and relatively, mm -hmm. and rel relatively healthy. Well, but it's going to be it's going to be far more difficult for us to justify giving boosters to young people. I have many, many patients who have already gotten their booster shot, and most of my patients are immunosuppressed and are on drugs for all sorts of things from transplanted organs to chemotherapy. So they're OK. They are the ones who should get it. I think people over 60 should get it. But I I'm, I'm, don't know what the FDA is going to say about people from the ages of, say, 16 to uh, 60. That's going to be a good question. All right, I want to ask you about, you know, what Vlad read um, in the introduction leading up to you. According to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, COVID-19 cases and deaths in nursing homes are declining. It's good news. But nursing home residents are still left vulnerable and in a vulnerable position because of unvaccinated care providers. Um, this is... Mm -hmm. I guess it's not shocking to me to tell you the truth, because I remember doctors sort of very early on um, speaking to someone who worked who worked in a lot of these homes. And I said, I don't understand why there are so many cases of covid when, you know, no one's going in, no one's going out. People can't see their relatives. And the only people going in are the people that work there. And he said, it's the people that work there. They're not wearing the masks. Mm. They're not social distancing when they're not at work. So now you add the layer, an additional layer of not everyone's getting vaccinated. And then on top of that, you have, you know, nurses resigning over vaccine mandates. I, I just, you know, I want to get from you just how challenging uh, that is and what sort of impact that has, particularly when you're talking about a nursing home where you have very vulnerable people. Well, you know, Anne-Marie, we forgot about the staffs of the nursing homes. When I was talking about schools and I was talking about hospitals, I thought about nursing homes and I would take for granted that the nursing homes would mandate their, uh, uh, their nursing assistants, their doctors, mm -hmm. uh, their uh, therapists, all of those people should be vaccinated. And actually, I'm for mandating healthcare workers to be vaccinated in general, and I consider them healthcare workers. And it's unconscionable to hear that they have not been vaccinated because a third of our deaths, you know, back in June were in nursing home residents. It was extraordinary. The poor folks that were there, uh, even if vaccinated, can be breakthrough, especially if there's a, a, a majorly infected uh, nurse's aide, for example, who's in there and sneezing and coughing on everybody. So, uh, Dr. Bob, 24 states are now threatening legal action over uh, President Biden's vaccine mandate on private businesses. Now, this comes as hospitals across the country, as you know, are forced to ration out care because they are becoming overwhelmed. Help us understand the repercussions on this divide. Um, it will, will it have a, what, what kind of repercussion will it have on turning the tide? It'll have a major repercussion, Vlad, because we, we know that mandating at least government employees is a good idea because they're being paid by the government. We think healthcare workers should be mandated to be vaccinated. And indeed, all the hospitals that I know in the immediate area of New York City are mandating vaccinations. They're not widely met with great approval by the employees, but you know what? It's public health, it's very important. The politicization of the vaccine mandates is what bothers me. 
I mean, if you look at the states that are uh, fighting this mandate, uh, it's the Republican states. Now, I uh, don't see where that should be an issue. I don't see where this should be politicized because this is a public health measure which reflects Democrats as well as Republicans. And I think that's going to come back to haunt them. Uh, I just think it's a terrible thing uh, to know that just because you believe in such and such a, a a party that you're not getting vaccinated and you you run the risk of getting infected and dying. It's just uh, it's crazy. You talk about Republican states. Uh, several weeks ago, Governor DeSantis of Florida had a press conference about how Florida's fighting this pandemic. And, you know, as you know, he's not in favor of vaccine mandates. He not, he's not in favor of mask mandates in schools. In that press conference, he made a really big deal out of uh, monoclonal antibody therapy, uh, how, you know, everyone was going to have access to it. Uh, should they end up at the hospital? And, you know, that was kind of like his big push. And the FDA has certainly... Uh, you know, uh, given sort of signed off on it as a treatment, but they made a point of saying that it is not a substitute for vaccinations. Um, so can you talk a little bit about how this treatment works and why it's not a substitute for a vaccine? Well, it's, it's getting the horse lassoed after it has left the barn. It's post-exposure prophylaxis, meaning the, the key word here is post after you get infected, when you're really short of breath, you've got the headache, you felt like you've been hit by a Mack truck, you show up in the emergency room, we give you monoclonals to prevent you from being intubated and dying. You don't get the monoclonal, which has a half-life, which is fairly short. You don't get the monoclonal before you get infected. It's not a protective mechanism. It's a treatment for people who are significantly infected and run the risk of dying. Uh, these are targeted antibodies that are act to help your immune system overcome the virus that's already in you. So it's not going to prevent this. And you don't get this as a vaccine. This is definitely not a vaccine. Hmm. Uh, Dr. Bob, as you know, vaccine hesitancy remains a huge issue. Currently, uh, the tactics that are being employed by the White House, by doctors like yourself, are not as successful as they once were uh, in your opinion, two things. Um, what can be done? To, and we've asked this question. I think we ask it probably every week. But I think it's important that we continue to sort of drive home the message of what we can do, what folks can do to help ease vaccine hesitancy. And and barring that, um, what would the what would the world look like, Dr. Bob, if if the coronavirus was endemic and we just had it? I mean, already doctors are saying that we're going to have it. In, it's going to stay with us. We're going to be dealing with it for many years to come. But what would a world like that look like where some of us who are fully vaccinated receive our booster shots? Um, would we be able to live and, and work and play in the ways that we did pre-coronavirus? And what would that mean for folks who absolutely decided they don't want to get vaccinated? Well, it's going to be pretty dicey for those who don't want to get vaccinated. You know, this virus is going to be with us forever. Uh, coronaviruses have been around since the, the dawn of man. Uh, it just so happens that these particular, this particular novel coronavirus is extremely infective and very deadly. Way our country is going to eventually achieve herd immunity. I'm convinced of that, either by infection or by vaccine. The problem is if you want to travel to a place like uh, Iraq or you want to go to Africa on safari, you run the risk, for example, of being infected either on the plane or at the country that you arrive at. And that's always very dicey. You know, you never had to worry about whether there was an ICU or a good hospital in the country that you're going on vacation to. Mm. But that's the reality. If you go somewhere and you get infected uh, and you're not vaccinated, you run the risk of dying in a faraway place. Just think about that. That really is a reality. And that's what's going to be in the future. I hope our country achieves herd immunity at some time soon. All right, Dr. Bob, I hope so, too. Thank you so much. Thank you. So you can live stream the FDA's meeting on COVID booster shots. It's actually underway right now. All you have to do is head over to cbsnews.com slash virus. The agency is expected to vote on Pfizer's recommendation at 3.45 p.m. Eastern, and we'll have full coverage uh, right here on CBSN.